In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create interactive quizzes right inside your Kaltura videos. So for the CFC folks, we're going to go to Kaltura by going to cfc.mediaspace.kaltura.com. And when we come to the CFC CAS login screen, you're just going to, going to log in using your Cougars username and password. Now we're in Kaltura. What I want to do is I'm going to come up here under my name and choose my media because we're going to add a quiz to a video that already exists. So first, let's take a look at what, it, what these quizzes look like. I have a quiz here under Flipping My Classroom Quiz. I'm just going to click to play this. And this is what your students will see. So when we come in, we have this welcome screen and we can either download all of the test questions in order to see them in advance, or we can just click continue to begin the quiz. Now what will happen is this video will continue to play until we hit this little marker right here in the lower left corner, the number one. And that indicates that there's a question there. So I'm just going to fast forward us until we get to this part. All right, here it is. So it says, what sh show is shown in this image? Now, if the faculty member chose to, we can take a hint or we can just answer the question. So I'll say it was the Spock hour and then choose continue and now we can go on. So if there were more questions, you would see more numbers throughout the quiz. When we're finished, I can just click on that blue box and where it says, am I complete? Yes, I'll submit. And it's going to submit my test. It tells me that I didn't get any right on my one question test, which we expected. So now that you've seen how this looks from the student perspective, let's take a look at how we can add one of these on our own. Again, I'm going to come up here under my name and choose my media. And the first thing you want to do is locate the video that you have that you'd like to add a quiz to. So I'm going to add it to this flipping your classroom. So I'll just click on it to open it up just like I did before. And you can see that this one doesn't have any questions in it. There's no quiz attached to it. So under the actions menu, I'm going to choose add quiz. So just so you know, there is another way for you to create a quiz, and that's to come under the Add New and choose Video Quiz. You'll be asked to select the video, and then you'll end up in this exact same place. So the first thing is, what is the name of our quiz? So it's just put the word quiz at the end, and I'm fine with that. You remember when we took the quiz as a student, we saw that default message come up to get us started? This is where you can customize that if you want. Your next two choices are, do I want to give this tip that says all questions must be answered? Sure, I'll leave that checked. But this is the more important one. Do I want to allow the students to see the questions I'm going to ask them before I ask them the question? So if you remember when we looked at a student view, if I had clicked in the upper right hand corner, I could have downloaded all of the questions that were going to be asked to me so that I could see them in advance and be listening for those topics in the video. If this truly is more of a quiz situation, then you may not want to allow that. So it's personal preference, whatever you choose, either check it to allow them to download the questions in advance or uncheck it to not allow them. And then choose apply. All right, on our experience tab, the viewers will be able to change an answer before submitting the quiz. If you would like to allow that to happen, then leave it checked. If you don't want them to be able to go back and change anything, then uncheck it. Skip for now is similar in that the students do not have to answer every question in the order in which they, they come upon them. They can skip that question and then go back at the end and answer it at the end of the video. Again, it depends on the purpose of these questions as to whether or not this will work for you. So 
select it if you want to allow them to skip a question and go back to it later, uncheck it if you want to require them to answer every question in order. And again, choose apply. All right, the score. So when it's submitted, what score would you like them to see? Do you want them to see the score that they got on the test or do you not? If you don't, choose do not show scores. If you do want them to see how they did, like you remember I, did, I got a zero, you'll say show scores. And then do you want them to see their answers, the correct and incorrect answers? And I'm gonna say no, because I really want them to go back in the video and rewatch the video and then apply. All right, so now we've done all of the prelim, it's time to actually add our questions. So what we're gonna do is hit the play button and allow the video to play through until we're ready to ask our question. If I know that my question will not be asked until a little bit later in the video, I can use the scrubber bar to advance. All right, so you'll play your video and then stop it whenever you want the question to be added. So I'm going to add a question right here. Once I've stopped the video or paused the video, you'll see now I have a big blue plus sign in the center. And we'll click that to actually answer the question. So here's my question. Here's the right answer. Here's the first wrong answer. And then to add more, I'll just click the plus sign and click the plus sign again. All right, this is going to be the order of every single question. So it's going to stand to reason that you don't want the right answer to always be first. And you can change this in two ways. One is I can physically drag it to where I want it to be located. I want the right answer to be C in this case. Or I can come up here in the upper left hand corner and choose this shuffle button and it's just going to change the answers for me. If I choose, and again, this is optional, up here underneath this little light bulb, if I select it, I can give the student a hint as to which is the right answer and or I can tell them why the right answer was the right answer. So the hint can be shown before they answer, the why can be shown after they answer, but I'm going to leave both of those blank and I'm just going to choose save. If you want to see what it looks like, I will click Y and you'll see you just type in, but I'm going to click remove and save. So all I've done is my question, my answers, and then I randomized. And again, we'll hit play again and we'll keep on going until we want to add our next question. Stop, add, type my question, and we'll say save. All right, so when I'm finished, all I need to do is scroll down here and you can see in my timeline, I have all of my questions. I do recommend and best practice is that you do include some sort of question toward the end of the video as an encouragement for the students to watch the entire video. Otherwise, they might be inclined to go ahead and submit their quiz at this point in time. All right, so I'm just gonna choose preview quiz. Everything that I've done has been auto saved for me. So when I choose preview quiz, a, so here's my welcome message. You'll notice that I don't have the option to download that question bank like I did when we previewed at the beginning. That's because I turned that off. I'll choose and you see the very first question. So let's jump to it and here's my question. So this is the right answer. I'll choose that and say continue. Before I do that, you'll also notice that I have the skip for now option and that's because I chose to allow them to skip them if they want, but they have to come back at the end. Let's go ahead and advance to this next one here and ask, answer it. And we'll go to the last one and we'll answer it. we say applied and now you'll see that we have this little submit button so I'm going to go ahead and click on it take a moment to review your answers if I want to review them I can 
If not, I just click back on this and I click Submit. Now it tells me that I got a 67 because that's what I told him. I told it that, it that I could see my right and wrong answers. And I say done to finally submit the whole quiz for grading. So let's take a look then at how this looks after we've done it. So we'll just say go to media and you're going to share this exactly the way you would share any other Kaltura video, either via Oaks or via a URL. But when the student when hits play, instead of just playing the video as normal, the quiz will be embedded. One important note, let me drop back here to my media so I can show you this. This does not, adding a quiz does not affect the original video. So you can see as I scroll down, here is my original video. There's no quiz attached to it. But up here, you can see that I have a quiz that I created here, and then this is the one that I created today. So it just makes them over and over again, and it doesn't affect the original one. But let's take a look at this one here because I want to show you how you can see some of the statistics. So again, I'm going to click on this video in order to watch it. And down here at the bottom, under Actions, I'm going to choose Analytics. And so here's a few of the things that we can see. If anyone had taken the quiz, the average score would show here, <clears throat> the number of times the video had played, etc. What you really want to look at is this quiz users area. So I'll choose View All. And when I'm in it, it tells me right here, Benini M answered zero right and one wrong. This was on the very first test we took. All right, and here's the answer to the question. So what showed up in the image? Spock hour, which was wrong. So adding the interactive quizzes into your videos is a great way to ensure that the students are watching the entire video and that they're understanding what it is you want them to understand. However, you can see by your analytics that this is not really something that you would want to do for a grade other than a participation grade. The reason being that there is no numeric value generated for this quiz, which is a little problematic. While I can export this to a CSV file and open it in Excel, it's still just text. It doesn't give me a percentage on this test. And therefore, I think it makes it an unrealistic option for doing quizzing. However, I do think that this is a great way for those of you who are doing flipped classrooms to make sure that the students are watching the videos that you're posting. For those of you who are doing distance education, to make sure that the students, while they watch the lecture, are getting out of the lectures what you want them to get out of the lectures. Um, I, I mean, I think that this is going to be a wonderful resource for certain people. However, I don't think it is the end-all be-all, and I don't think that it would replace a full-blown quizzing tool like the Oaks Quizzing Area. If you're interested in using this and you still have questions after watching this tutorial, feel free to contact your instructional technologist in the Department of Teaching, Learning, and Technology.